Is that a GoPro? I don't know. I don't even know. Is it on? We're doing an intro for our new uh, YouTube series, Over the Land. And we're shooting it now? Yes. Is it on? So we have a new YouTube series called Over the Land, and episode one of season one, we just finished editing it. I think it's super awesome. Totally awesome. And we want you to see it. Well, so you should probably watch it. Should we let them see it? Let's go. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Welcome to Red River 4x4, where the roar of engines collides with the serene whispers of the wildlands. I'm Chris Landino, master technician, mountain man, and off-road enthusiast. Alongside our team of renegade experts, we bring you adventure and expertise from every angle. From comedic moments in the shop to the heart-pounding thrills of conquering the trails. Join us as we traverse the rugged landscapes and delve into the intricate world of off-road customization as we take you on an epic journey over the land. hood latches on this JL to install combat off-road billet aluminum hood latches. Morning. One more time. Let me say something. Let me talk. The whirly bird. <laughs> uses the same size, pretty much the same size hardware, same amount of bolts, just made of aluminum instead of plastic. Yeah. And these are the turnbuckle style where we can tighten them to Correct. however we want them. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, so if we put a big old fancy supercharger or something in here and need to raise the hood up, we yeah. can do that. Well, that should be step next. I agree. Big old fancy supercharger. All right, so step one on this project was the turnbuckle style hood latches from Combat mm -hmm. Off-Road. What did you think of that product? Man, they're super simple to replace. Anybody can do it. Uh, use, I think, three different tools, maybe just two, to get the OEMs off and the new ones put on. Really easy to adjust. You don't have to worry about any hood flatter. Um, and they're really well built. Yeah. Really nice. I, I agree. Uh, anodized aluminum, uh, something you'd expect to see on an aircraft really. It was very, mm -hmm. very well engineered. Um, it's a good place to start as well. It was one of the simpler things that we did on this build. Um, we were able to start without reading the instructions. Yep. Uh, that would catch us later on, but uh, <laughs> it was a good start. It was. Meet Tyler Sloan, filmmaker, influencer, and relentless adventure seeker. Today he's taking his passion for the extreme to the next level with a full makeover for his Jeep Wrangler, Oscar Mikadid. Tyler's Jeep upgrades include combat off-road fenders, tail gunner tail lights, hood latches, a winch fair lead, crash fab bumper, worn winch, and Casey highlights flex fours. We've already installed the hood latches. Up next, the combat off-road fuel gun. First impressions, I like it. It looks a lot like the uh... Newer Jeep caps, it has got an aluminum door on it. It's nice, sturdy, keeps your uh, gas cap from being exposed to the elements. I dig it. It has instructions that you can scan the QR code, but I'm just gonna kinda wing it.
Well, that ain't going anywhere now. So one, once we finished that up, uh, we moved on to the tail gunner tail lights. You know, there's several of these kits out there that I don't feel flow with the vehicle, but these things are really well executed as far as design and fit. So what we have here is a trail ready, durable, aluminum, uh, military grade housing uh, that goes on your 2018 and up JL or JLU. Um, it is an easy install, plug and play, has all the lights you need. These are DOT and SAE certified LED lights. This light here is made by Grote, one of the oldest manufacturers in the United States of lights. You can see right there, it has an SAE and DOT number on there. So this is perfectly legal to have on your Jeep. It's durable, strong, trail ready. It's an amazing product. Yeah, they were simple to install. The adjustability, there was a lot of adjustability there to where mm -hmm. if you had a gap, you could tighten here, loosen here, yes. get it lined up the way that you want and fit really, really tight. Yeah. It's very nice. So now we're in the point where we're getting into the heavy meat of the project. Now we're gonna have to actually destroy pieces of this Jeep. Our buddy Tyler's watching us, filming us in fact, and yes. we're gonna start ripping things apart on this Jeep as we put in the combat off-road fenders and fender liners. That was a pretty good time. Yeah, it was basically we ripped every bit of plastic that was on the outside of this Jeep off. There's ways around that you can't do it. I don't know that way because I'm generally ripping them off and not putting them back on. Yeah, I mean, Sasquatch has always worked for me. Something between Sasquatch and Grizzly Bear is my technique <laughs> for removing anything. And uh, then I can go find somebody skilled like you to help me put it back together. Yeah. Well, I don't think you can pull these off without breaking the clips. Saul can, you and I cannot. <laughs> get that thing out of there that's definitely in the way was this in the instructions or are we still not looking at the instructions uh i glanced at the instructions yeah mm -hmm. i bet that'll fit now much better yeah because that fits inside then let me try to get this started It was uh, a lot of fun. Still rolling with the no instruction aspect of it. And that's something I want to hit on really quick. You know, I, I do read instructions. There's, sure. a, there's a lot of talk out there that I don't. I do refer to them. The point is, it's super easy to install this. For, for sure. This is something that you can do. It's not that difficult. These products that, that we're trying to pass along to you, it's something that you can do at home. Yeah, we've got a lot of experience, but that's part of the reason why we don't read the instructions because we want to see if we can do this fairly easily. The fact of the matter is Combat Off-Road has an amazing set of instructions for every product that they have. You can do this at home and you'll love the product. Now back to the episode. Okay, time out. Wait a minute. Where's my fucking sandwich? What are you doing over there? It's lunchtime. Hell yeah. 
What else you got in there? You got a sub sandwich over there? Well, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> we are headed to Cracker Barrel for lunch. Not a place we normally go, but a highly recommended place to go today. Jump that one, jump that one, now jump back. What's it say about two? You're a genius. Collectively, <laughs> we are a genius. <laughs> Amazing what a little game will keep you occupied. Working Thursday, trying to drive back Friday Thursday, or maybe. Or Friday. So it's what, like a 12 hour drive? Yeah, 10 or 12 hours. Yeah, it's 11 hours. To rustic Mount Overland, what town is that? Irondale. If we go through Louisiana. So I actually like the upper way a little bit. So we get to see a little bit of Tennessee. Although you're the only 10 I see. <laughs> Just the tiniest sliver of Tennessee. Yeah, so if we could get back to 16. Is that Friday? Yeah. For six states that we could go through. It's a full size house. What? Is that nickel color? I can't believe I fell for that. I do like a good cola. All right, so we've had our excellent lunch. We planned our trip for our next adventure. We're back in the shop. You go back to work on the fenders. It's time to do the wiring. Tell me about the wiring process for the uh, front fenders. So, like you stated earlier, the instructions are very clear on this thing. Uh, it gives you color codes and everything to basically to splice right into the uh, little peanut bulbs that they supply with the fenders. Um, very easy, simple tools. Got some heat shrink connectors. I soldered them, but if you got some heat shrink connectors, simple pair of crimpers and a torch, you're solid to go on this thing. Yeah. Don't need resistors, you don't need anything. Just splice it in the way you have and you're good to go. All right, so while Dakota's finishing up the front fenders and he's gonna move on to the rear fenders, I go over into the shop and I start working on this crash fab bumper that Tyler had bought at Trail Hero 2023 and brought back. Um, and they hand build these bumpers. Um, they're super strong, obviously. Very well built and very custom. We're getting ready to install this thing. Okay, so one of the unique things about this crash fat bumper, obviously your winch and stuff goes in here. Neat thing is this angle right here. So where this mounts to the front of the Jeep, which would be facing this direction, this angle right here helps you with your approach when you're doing rock crawling and that sort of stuff uh, to where you're not jamming up against a rock it gives you a little bit more clearance and a little bit more angle to just slide right over and you can see this angle is about a 45 so that if you ran up against something it would just slide you right up onto it until your wheels touch um, so pretty unique thing about this bumper all right we're on to day two i finished up painting the bumper yesterday dakota finished up the fenders we are ready to install this crash fab bumper but what do we find wrong bumper yeah uh, we don't really know what happened. There's a good chance Tyler got so excited at Trail Hero that he may have told him he had a JK and not a JL. Regardless, we're putting the bumper on. That's right. It's just metal. Nothing gonna stop us. We fabricated stuff before. <laughs> not a big deal. Day two kicks off with a cold and wet morning, but the Red River 4x4 crew is undeterred. They're up bright and early, eager to complete the epic upgrades on Tyler's Jeep. So we had to make some minor adjustments. We made a phone call to Justin. I think you called Justin out there at Crash Fab. What did he tell you to do? Basically, we decided to notch a little bit more than what we had to. Uh, really not much more of a cutting than we had to do. Had to fab up a little deal for the sway bar mount, but 
I mean, it took us an extra 30 minutes, maybe. Uh, because he said basically just weld this to the bumper, but I want to be able to take the bumper off if we've got to. Well, we could add some brackets to the bumper to bolt it to if we had to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've got enough strap over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's where that hole's going to be, is right there. So if we have this cut off. Yeah, well, I, or just get a little piece of strap and fucking weld it from here down mm -hmm. to there. Oh, Box on it. here. Yeah, weld it to the frame down to that and eliminate all of this shit. That way it's not attached to the bumper. Correct. I think that's, I think that's the way. So if it would have been a JK, it would have been a simple cut the horns off, put the bumper on, you're good to go, right? Correct. Yeah. So we had to make some adjustments. I would imagine the JL is going to be just as simple. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We had to cut a little tab off the bumper, a little couple of tabs off the frame, reinforced it with a little strap we had around the shop. Good to go. Cut that mo. I ain't got very steady hands. There's an undeniable artistic beauty in fabricating something that overcomes an obstacle. The process transforms raw materials into functional art, solving problems with precision and creativity. See a problem. I ain't said all it. Nothing compares to the sound of grinding wheels and welders, a symphony of sparks and steel that marks each step towards a solution. It's a testament to human ingenuity and the sheer joy of creating something that makes a difference. Maybe that'll do it. This is better than nothing. Huh. Cheapo headphones. Trying to keep myself from going any more deaf than I already am. If you want to dust some paint over those, you can. Over the I'm a photographer that took this photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's retaliation. <laughs> Alright, now we're under the winch. What do we do? That was a 9,000 pound, right? Come on in. No, it was a 10S. We are, you're in it. It's fine. It, the whole point of this is we're, it, the building's under construction, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the bumper on. We've got some accessories that we want to put on. Tyler picked out the KC Highlight Flex 4s. They match some of the other lights that he already has on his Jeep. Uh, we're also going to put a Warren 10S. That's another product that we picked up from the guys at Warren. Kia at Warren sold those to us at uh, Trail Hero in 2023. got our last winch that we had left over from that and um, also the combat anodized aluminum fairly correct um, 
So tell us a little bit about the uh, the install of those products. Man, they're super simple. We winches are easy to put on. Anybody can put them as long as you got the right application. Uh, the Flex 4s were a smooth install because we also installed the S-Pod Bantam touchscreen in the Jeep. What's awesome about the S-Pod is it's a seamless install when it comes to accessories outside your vehicle. All right, so I just finished wiring the Flex 4s to the uh, front bumper to the S-Pod. So now I'm working on removing the original wiring to the Flex 3s that were on a switch inside. So now that we have an S-Pod, I'm doing away with all that and going to rewire it to the S-Pod. And at the same time, going to run the S-Pod power wiring over here to the bumper, or I mean to the battery. You got one location under the hood, you run it all in there. You don't have to worry about going through the firewall each time, having a switch panel inside. It makes it super simple. All right, we're all wrapped up. We've got turnbuckle hood latches. We've got a fuel door. We've got tail gunner lights. We have combat fenders and fender liners. We have a crash fab front bumper. We have a worn winch. We have KC Highlight Flex 4s. We have the S-Pod Bantam and we have the combat fair lead. So we started at the front, worked our way to the back, and that's part of the journey that we wanna share with our viewers and our customers. It's not always just an epic trip, right? No. This is very similar as in, we have this plan, we start out here and we end up here. And that's what we did with this Jeep. And for Tyler, our buddy Tyler, who started out with this plain Jane Jeep that he bought from this dealership, in fact. You start out with that blank canvas and you end up with this epic vehicle and that in itself is a journey. Yes. And man, I'm glad that all of you are here to enjoy that and experience that with us. We had some more stuff in the shop that I think we got Tyler talking into. Maybe some bigger tires, maybe some lockers and some gears. But this thing is turned out great. Yeah. Um, that's what's awesome about these things. You can build little at a time. You don't have to go from zero to everything. Yeah. Um, it was really fun building this thing. Yeah. So that's it for episode one of Over the Land. We appreciate you taking the time to watch it and sharing this adventure with us. Coming up, we've got a trip uh, to Overland West in Flagstaff, Arizona. That's a big deal that's coming up and we'll have a full episode on that. In between now and then, we have a couple mini episodes that are coming out that feature our trip to Irondale, Alabama, where we picked up our Rustic Mountain Overland trailer. Yep. And also another episode, mini episode of all the things that we installed on that trailer. Absolutely, yeah, it was a lot of fun going out there, meeting Ryan, having some hands on with that trailer. Yeah. Can't so, wait for you guys to see it. That's it for episode one of Over the Land. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Over the Land is brought to you by Red River 4x4 and a product of the Ed Morris Automotive Group. What's up guys, Dakota here is Red River 4x4. We're here today to show you guys our Rustic Mountain Overland Patrol XCT trailer. We've got it outfitted with some accessories here uh, to kind of show you guys the endless options you have with setting up one of these trailers.